This is a case of a 68-year-old man with that's undergoing cataract surgery, and he has significant weak sawmills, and I'm here just shaking the eye a little bit before starting, and you can kind of see quite a bit of uh, phacodinesis. His, um, his other eye actually was, uh, his cataract was sublux about 30% inferiorly, and kind of had like a Marfan's-like um, presentation. However, he had no history or... Um, had, didn't have the body habitus. So here I made my three millimeter superior uh, mini scroll tunnel and I usually initiate my capsular rexus with uh, just you try to force this button here with in this case there's just not enough zonular traction to be able to do that and even with the systome needle here you can kind of see the whole lens bag complex kind of um, move around as I'm just trying to initiate my rexus here and um, so I'm proceeding pretty cautiously and here I'm picking up that flap with uh, Eutratus again and and I notice a few things the capsule is kind of wrinkling around where I'm trying to go and I'm having a difficult time kind of um, making progress and especially here when I'm trying to round the corner here there, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm not the edge is not really moving and I'm just torquing the whole lens and the whole bag so um, and so I go ahead and put a capsule hook, and these are um, McCool hooks um, by FCI Ophthalmics, and um, I just need a little counter traction so I can continue my rexus in. And here, just with that one little hook there, the I'm able to um, continue my capsule rexus um, without much difficulty. And, and as I'm kind of passing where my vector forces aren't really affected by that zonular hook I'm again having difficulty so I go ahead and put another uh, capsular hook and I'm able to complete my capsular rexus um, because the the lens was so wobbly I decided to put another two capsular hooks uh, prior to um, starting my my FACO just to give me a little bit more support as I'm doing my hydrodissection and trying to rotate the lens, uh, one of the capsule hooks kind of slips, and I just decide to switch some of these hooks out for the MST capsule hooks because they're just a little larger, have larger surface area and a little more stability. Here I'm doing my horizontal chop and just proceeding very slowly, just so that I don't stress the zonules and I can keep uh, an eye on the bag because um, I. I'm assuming that it possibly could billow up from below or the equator might be coming in where I, I'm not adequately visualizing. So here as I'm removing the last pieces in Vaco and starting the IAM, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. And I can see that, you know, kind of the equators of the bag are kind of coming in on all four sides. And so at this point, I'm deciding, hmm, should I put a, a caps retention ring? Should I put a... And I really didn't think that would really hold. There were not enough zonules to support that. And so I was also thinking maybe I need to do a, uh, put in a Sioni ring. Um, but, you know, with that much zonule loss, I didn't think that even a one point fixation of the bag would be adequate enough. So I decided to remove the bag and um, do a glued IOL. And so here I'm using the IA to kind of aspirate the bag and it's coming pretty easily. I just have to um, use my second instrument to um, assist in just pushing that capsule, that you know, thicker capsule into the aspiration hole of the IA. And so at this point, the, the vitreous face is still intact. I'm not encountering any vitreous. I, um, I use a Wexel to kind of check and yep, there's no vitreous that I... I'm noticing too, uh, yeah. So I, I go ahead and um, prepare for my um, scleral flaps for my glued eye well. So I'm here doing uh, extending my peritomy and also creating a new peritomy across um, in the area where I'm going to make my flaps. So I do a little bit of uh, cautery and um, I'm getting ready to um, do my scleral marks. And here's a, a scleral marker with. Um, I'm centering it and trying to make it as 180 degrees apart as I can. I'm using a guarded uh, AK LRI knife and I'm setting it, I believe, at 300 microns for this case. 
um, and just uh, making my partial thickness flaps here. Now I I had already operated on his uh, other eye and he had a very thin sclera and I had perforated on one of the flaps on his opposite eye. So I am pretty um, cautious and and I'm erring on the thinner side. So here I'm using a, a crescent blade, um, kind of uh, tunneling under the areas where I, I made my scores and just proceeding very carefully because just uh, my experience with his other eye didn't, didn't want to perforate and having to make another sight. So, you know, once I reached the other end, I just kind of pushed down with my 0.12s and with a side slicing mo uh, motion, I get a pretty decent but thin um, flap. And on the, this side, I'm, this is kind of a little embarrassing thin, embarrassingly thin flap. Um, and I generally prefer a little bit thicker flap, but I was just a little bit paranoid because I had I just remember what my experience with his other eye. So here I'm doing a little bit of anterior vitrectomy um, just to make a little more space um, while I'm inserting the IOL. And I'm making another paracentesis, uh, a little bit of tangential approach for my AC maintainer. And here I'm using a 26 gauge needle to make my intrascleral tunnels to uh, tuck my haptics. And um, I generally start about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half posterior to the limbus and tunnel about three to four millimeters in length. And I, I tend to err on the longer side because um, just to give myself a little bit more space. Um, and I've been in a situation where it was too short and I actually have to go back and make, uh, uh, make it a little longer. So it's just easier to err on the longer side. And, and here I'm making a sclerotomy again about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half posterior to the limbus using a 21 gauge hypodermic needle and initially I used a 20 gauge MVR blade but it just a little bit more secure with I felt um, with the 21 gauge uh, hypodermic needle and here I'm inserting the lens I'm using um, on my left hand um, MST micro holder forceps and you just want to grab the very tip of the haptic and hold the very coaxial like so that it doesn't snag or bend the haptic or break when you're trying to pull it out through the scrotomy. This is a screw type inserter and I'm having my scrub slowly advance the IO wall as I'm externalizing the, the leading haptic. Uh, this is a standard uh, AMO Technus ZA9003 lens which I use in most of my routine cataract cases. And because I don't have an assistant working with me, I I, ha I put this little donut that I took off of the the capsule hooks and it gives just enough security that it will hold the, the haptic there and won't allow it to fall back into the eye. And so with that secure, I'm now inserting the trailing haptic through my tunnel there and I'm doing um, a handshake technique as described by Dr. Agarwal and looking back, I should have grabbed the very tip of the haptic while with my right hand pushing into the eye because now I have to kind of grab it twice as I'm passing it from my left hand to the right hand and also the tip of the haptic got slightly bent as you'll see when I externalize it but um, so something to keep in mind there so now that we got there our haptic um, our trailing haptic externalized, you can kind of see again the tip of the haptic is slightly bent, but no worries, I can go ahead and tweak it a little bit to straighten it out. And here I'm pushing um, and tucking the um, the haptic into the tunnel, so I just get the like, maybe a couple millimeters in and then I switch instruments to an angle McPherson and kind of um, push it a little deeper and advance it. And If you're having a little trouble, there's a few um, things. You know, I didn't do anything special with these little tunnels, but um, if you're having trouble finding or advancing your haptic into the tunnel, you can kind of stretch it with a cyclodiasis spatula, or you can um, use heel on GV and kind of um, um, inflate it to a little bit with the heel on GV. Or, and I also tend to just, you know, tent it up with the 0.12s uh, right at the lip there and, and here I'm kind of working on centration and you can advance it or reverse it. And that's what the beauty of this technique is, is the centration of the eye walls are so adjustable and it just makes it so easy in here. Here I'm using a little bit of the anterior retractor just, just to um, clean up any 
tiny strand of vitreous that may have come through the sclerotomy. So I removed my AC maintainer and here I'm inserting the uh, anterior chamber over there just to keep it formed and uh, in most cases I do it in the other order but um, this this seems to work too. So I just want to make sure everything's dry and you have to take that infusion out as water will be shooting out of your your scrotomy while you're trying to glue it. And so here I'm adding some of this uh, thin uh, thick glue. Uh, this is a uh, fibrin glue or to seal. And the main purpose of the to seal is just mainly to seal the the flaps and the conge. It doesn't really add any support to the lens. It's just to make sure that there's no leak or hypotony on in the immediate post-op period. So here, here I'm adding the thin glue and pushing and the flaps down and putting a little bit of glue near my main incision and kind of pulling the conch together so you can do this all in one sweep or I kind of do it in with one application and if you have any extra glue um, I tend to trim it away here I'm just using scissors to trim because you don't want to pull on the glue because the whole sheet of glue from where you're trying to glue can pull out and here I'm just using a little bit of extra glue just to make the um, wound covering the, uh, the sorry the conch covering the incision just a little bit um, um, better opposed. So I generally wait about a minute or so for the the glue to cure, and then I then I readjust the uh, intraocular pressure you know, with BSS. And here I'm also hydrating the my paracentesis and and I don't always do this, but I I'm leaving an, an air bubble in the anterior chamber to prevent chamber collapse if there is hypotony and sometimes I fill it just with BSS and it ends up fine. I've never had a flat chamber. So here's a photo of the patient on his post-op day one visit and uh, he's comfortable and amazing. He's actually 20-20 uncorrected vision. He's, he has a clear cornea, lens looks very nicely centered and patient's happy. Here's uh, another photo about a one, one week out and here are photos of the patient one month post-op. Um, you can see the conge and sclera have healed uh, very nicely. And you can visualize where the haptic is tucked in a few millimeters in the intrascleral pockets. And overall, the patient is very happy, comfortable, has uh, good visual acuity, and we have uh, stable and well-positioned IOL.